Hello and welcome everyone to our Zoom session for Envirothon Advisors on team training and student engagement for the 2022 Envirothon season. I know we have people from all across the United States and Canada on the call with us today, and I'm so glad that you could be here. I'm Stephanie Toller, the NCF Envirothon Education Specialist. A little bit about myself, I've been with the NCF Envirothon since 2019. I'm a science educator with experience both in the classroom and out in the field. And I myself am an Envirothon alumna. I really love participating in the program as a student. It helped to spark my passion for environmental science and informed my career path to bring me here today. So I'm very excited to be with you all. And with us today is Jacqueline Monty, NCF Envirothon Operating Committee member and distance educator. Jacqueline, would you like to say a few words of introduction about yourself? Sure, you bet. I'm uh, joining you today from uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. We are one of the coldest cities in North America, but it is a balmy minus five today, minus five Celsius today, so it's looking pretty good. Um, I'm really eager to spend the next hour and a bit with you and just looking forward to uh, learning with you and learning from you. So uh, yeah, just ready for a great afternoon here. Great, thank you so much, Jacqueline. So today we're going to cover a few things to help you navigate training your teams for your local Envirothon event in these still uncertain times. We're going to start off with an engaging activity with an educational tool that can be used whether your teams are training together in person or need to train separately at a distance. Then we'll dive into some fresh, pers fresh perspectives on student learning and distance education, ways to increase student engagement, some resources for training your teams, and then wrap up with another fun activity. So if we could go on to the next slide, please. Some of you may not be familiar with the NCF part of NCF Envirothon. NCF is the National Conservation Foundation, a 501c3 nonprofit that sponsors the Envirothon program. The National Conservation Foundation supports the education and development of future conservation leaders through its two programs, the NCF Envirothon, which you're here for today, and the Next Generation Leadership Institute. There are several different levels of Envirothon competition, and NCF is the international level. So the qualifying events for your teams will occur more locally. So some of your states and provinces may have area or regional competitions that are based in your county or a group of counties or a particular section of your state or province, while others may just have one large state or provincial competition. While NCF helps to support the states and provinces, with their programs, we do not organize that level of the competition, which is where your teams will be competing first. So many of the concerns and questions that were submitted when you registered for the webinar were more appropriate for the state or provincial level or were specific to those, com those competitions. Um, I'll put a link in the chat to the page on the NCF website where you can find your state and provincial Envirothon website, as well as contact information for your state and provincial Envirothon representatives to help better direct those inquiries that are more specific to your local programs. So I will go ahead and put those in the chat. And these will also be available um, for those of you who are watching later uh, in the material with this video. So when you go to the NCF Envirothon website, envirothon.org, at the top, you'll see a menu bar, you go to contact, and then there will be a state and provincial representative section. You'll click on that. It has this little alphabet um, directory where you can click on, you know, what the, the starting letter of your state or province, and it will pop up your program. And you can expand that, and it will show you your state and provincial website, as well as contact information um, for your state and provincial representatives for your Envirothon program specifically. All right, so let's get started with an activity. Um, as you may have already heard me say, possibly many times, uh, depending on when you joined the call, we are going to be doing an interactive activity with iNaturalist today. Um, and let's go on to the next slide. So today we'll be exploring the NCF Envirothon iNaturalist project. iNaturalist is a wonderful tool to get your students outside and exploring while learning about topics that are relevant to the Envirothon. iNaturalist is one of the largest citizen science projects in the world. 
and your students can collaborate with each other, with you, their advisors, and natural resource professionals to identify species and to get to know their local ecology. There are both iOS and Android apps, as well as a web browser version for iNaturalist. Even if a student doesn't have a computer or a stable internet connection at home, most students have access to at least one smartphone in their family. The mobile application for iNaturalist will allow a larger number of students to engage with this project. Um, and there is also an option to obscure your location if you're making an observation from your backyard and don't necessarily want that information to be public instead of, you know, at your local state park. The next slide, please. iNaturalist focuses on the hands-on experiential learning that is foundational to the Envirothon program. It has many applications and it can be incorporated into your team training or used in an extension of training provided by resource professionals or other educational activities that you may be using for your teams. So without further ado, let's try it out. In your registration, you're asked to download the iNaturalist app uh, create an account and join the NCF Environment iNaturalist project. If you haven't done that yet, please take a few minutes to do it now. And I'll put the links yet again in the chat. And let's take 10 minutes to go outside and make some observations. You can make an observation on any living thing. And if you can't get outside right now, you can also use a photo that you've taken in the past and you have stored on your camera roll. You can even make an observation of your office plant or your pet, but make sure to mark those observations as captive or cultivated under that particular uh, category in iNaturalist. Because iNaturalist is a citizen science project, uh, this, this data is used for by scientists um, all over the world. So we do want to make sure we're being accurate in our observations. So I will go ahead and put those links back up in the chat. If you have not created your account and or joined the app already, and if you have, let's take about 10 minutes. So here on the East Coast, it is 3.15 p.m. So let's come back at 3.25. Please adjust for your time zone. Um, so 10 minutes to go outside and make an observation. Can I ask a quick question? I've had yes, my yes, yes. for a long time. Will it? Will my general observations that I do now just automatically go in there into the end? So, so once you join the NCF Envirothon iNaturalist project, any qualifying observations that you make um, based on the project's parameters uh, will be included. So our project parameters are pretty wide, so they encompass pretty much anything. You can make an observation anywhere. Um, some projects are more location-oriented, so they might limit it to a particular city or a particular state. Ours is wherever, um, and the time frame for that is pretty open as well. So anything that you make, uh, any observations that you make will be added automatically. So thanks so much for that question. Were there any other questions about iNaturalist? I see some amazing photos already, some great contributions. Excellent. Let me see if I pull up the web version and refresh that. Ooh. We've got some scat and some tracks. That's excellent. Um, so another great thing about iNaturalist is it doesn't necessarily have to be the living thing itself. It can also be evidence of a living thing. So you can include observations of scat tracks. You can also include bird calls or frog calls. You can upload audio files. Um, it's a really interesting um, and unique platform. What does it mean by captive or cultivated? Does so that, that would... Like, um, dem like you grew it yourself? So that would be like domestic animals. Um, if you happen, you know, take to take a photo of your cat, um, that would be captive or cultivated, like landscaping in your yard. You know, it's, it's outside, but it's not exactly, you know, might not be native to the area. 
and wasn't didn't necessarily propagate there on its own. Um, like you, you can still make observations for non-native species and things like invasive species, but the, the captive or cultivated designation is really for things that humans put in a particular place, um, whether it be an animal or a plant or otherwise. And then when I, for the add to projects option, it shows NCF and Virathon, but it's gray and won't let me click on it. Are you in the app or on the web browser version? Uh, the app. Okay. Let's see. Does oh, the did you go down? Visibility need to be on open or anything like that? It doesn't have to be because we do accept um, obscured coordinates. If you, it might be if you have your privacy settings on the absolute most strict um, setting, you may not necessarily, it may not count for the project and be able to upload it there. Because there, there are a few different, there's completely private where no one can see where you made the observation. It's just, I saw this mushroom somewhere. Uh, the obscured setting does, I think, a two kilometer by two kilometer radius around where you had, where you observed it. So you can know like the general area that it was in. Um, and then open coordinates can give you the exact location if you were in like a public park and you're like, I see a white oak tree. So that, that may be a reason why you're not able to, to see that. Um, but it should let you be able to join the project anyway. So when you went to the project search feature and NCF and Virathon popped up, um, were you able to click on that? I have joined the NCF and Virathon. I'm just trying to upload the photo in it. Oh, okay. Okay, great. So if you select private location visibility for an individual photo, the photo can still upload, just won't show any coordinates. Is that correct? Yes. And anyone else could still see the photo? Yes. So I just um, overheard that uh, question about privacy. I have my privacy settings and you'll see my photo is currently uh, about five down. It's unknown. It's a winter scene with a bear tree. <laughs> um, that's when I just went and took and uploaded. Um, everything about it is unknown. But when you click on it, I don't think you can see my location. So try it out on that one. So I have my privacy settings um, or my settings set to private. But I don't know why it says 8.19 a.m. So I guess I'm in a completely different time zone according to the app. <laughs> oh no, I am able to see your, um, or maybe that's it. I think that's a different winter twig. I don't believe that is your observation, Jacqueline. Let me see. There's snow on the ground in mine. Okay. That is Crestview Park. Here we go. Oh, so my, okay, so I need to look at my privacy settings again then. All right, I am able to see your observation, but it doesn't give me a specific location, Jacqueline. But it gave it to somebody else? Somebody else noticed it? Yeah, it shows your location to me. <laughs> well, <laughs> if you all well, want to come and visit now <laughs> so it's got a question mark in the little thing so it shows that you're vaguely in the area of Winnipeg but not right. your specific location up to the street yeah okay. I kind of think it says the street it looks like it does 
And if you don't have a smartphone, I saw something in the chat. If you don't have a smartphone, you are able to access the, um, the browser version. And you can also upload uh, observation via your computer. All right, got about two more minutes for people to get back with their observations. All right, so I did another one and I went back in and it looks like I have to set the privacy settings each time I use it. You can change it for each individual one, but you should also have a global automatic like setting. Default, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, so I just have to figure that out. May I ask a question? Sure. Um, <laughs> so, when I'm trying to upload a picture, that's the piece I haven't been able to do. I, I want to be in the iNaturalist via NCF, not the general iNaturalist. So once you join the NCF Envirothon iNaturalist project, any qualifying observations that you meet will automatically be added to the project. So when you're making the observation, that can just be in your regular iNaturalist. Okay. So I'm not sure if I joined the, and I thought I joined through NCF, but I keep getting the overall, not the NCF iNaturalist view. That's, that's fine. Are okay. you on the app or on the? Well, I'm on both because I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm on okay. the app on my phone. Yeah, so if you joined it with your account, the page that you'll make observations from on your phone is going to be general iNaturalist for everything. Um, if you want to particularly see like the stats for our project, the observations that are being made for NCF Envirothon, yeah. that, that is where you'll go to the specific NCF Envirothon iNaturalist page. And how do I find that on the homepage? On the, the iNaturalist.org, how do I find NCF? So I put a link in the chat. Um, it's inaturalist.org slash projects slash oh. I'm sorry. Okay, so I have to put, I have to actually do a search for that. Okay, thank you. And sorry about that. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Okay, so it is about 3.25 for my time. And Hopefully everyone is back from making your observations. And let's go on to the next slide. So welcome back everyone. How was it? Hopefully you had fun at making your observations and you can see how you might be able to use this tool in your team training. Uh, I know we troubleshooted a few different things uh, in the chat, answered some questions um, for follow-up. There are really detailed guides on the iNaturalist site if you're having trouble using specific aspects or if you want to learn more about the privacy settings or how to upload an observation, et cetera, and even how to set up a project, um, as is just mentioned in the chat right now. Uh, if you wanted to create your own specific project, there are instructions on the iNaturalist site for that as well. So there's a wealth of resources there. Um, and hopefully you got a chance to try out this tool for your teams and are excited to take it into the field with them. So let's go on to the next slide. And to help you better use this interactive educational tool, we have developed an advisor guide with a full lesson plan and educational correlations to the Next Generation Science Standards, the AP Environmental Science Curriculum, the North American Association for Environmental Education's Guidelines for Excellence in Environmental Education with their education strands, as well as the NCF Envirothon Learning Objectives. There is also a student guide that allows the students to do the activity independently. Um, for example, if your teams have to be training separately and your student um, needs to do the activity by, by themselves in their backyard, um, or you, they aren't able, aren't able to gather in person, there is a independently guided student activity as well, um, along with some worksheets for observation and data collecting. As you can see on the slide right here, 
We have our forestry ecosystem exploration activity that's ready to go. Um, and you see the little snapshot of the advisor guide here. Or it's got you know, the objectives, what will be covered in the activity, a summary, how much time it will take, the materials that you'll need, educational correlations, and then instructions for the activity, as well as key, um, key words, vocabulary words, um, and topics are further on in the guide. So that can also be found in the uh, iNaturalist section of the Envirothon website. So I'll put that link in the chat again. Um, and it's at the top of the page, you'll go to where it says resources on the environthon.org website, go down and it says iNaturalist activity there. Um, and you'll be able to see that, see the getting started guide, um, directions for how to join, as well as these great uh, lesson plans, for advisor guide, student guide, the worksheets, the forestry ecosystem exploration activity is ready to go and activities for the other areas of study in Envirothon are forthcoming. So hopefully this will help you to orient yourself with iNaturalist, will give you something a little more concrete to do with your students and be thinking about other ways that you could expand and use this tool elsewhere. So next slide, please. We encourage you to your, and your teams to get outside and explore. Um, it's a great way to get your students excited about learning and to cultivate that hands-on outdoor education that's foundational to the Envirothon program. So thank you all for participating in our activity. And I will now turn it over to Jacqueline to talk more about team engagement and student learning. Sounds good, thank you. Um, I love iNaturalist and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's just a lot of fun to use with students all over the place. Um, so thank you for that, Stephanie. Um, Envirothon 2022, it's hard to believe that 2019, the springtime, was kind of our last go at Envirothon as we knew it for years and years. Um, so wherever you happen to be, I know your situations are looking different. Uh, and for many of us, we just don't know what our situations are going to be yet. Uh, and that's certainly the case for us here in Manitoba. Um, so I wanted to speak with you for a few minutes and um, gain some learning opportunities with you. And my learning intentions for this are all about engagement, excitement, and the building of effective relationships. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, I am in Manitoba, Canada, born and raised in Winnipeg here, which is um, about an hour, maybe not even an hour uh, north of the border uh, of North Dakota. So quite close to all of you folks, um, or most of you folks and your country as well. Um, when I first started uh, teaching, I wanted an experience that it was a little bit different, a little bit out of the city, you know, not my regular uh, way of being and doing. And I actually ended up uh, heading to Cormorant, Manitoba. So this is in north central Manitoba now. And uh, it, it was amazing. So I ended up going to a small town, less than 400 people in my town. And uh, most people couldn't believe that growing up in the city, my graduating class, the grade 12 graduates of high school uh, for me were more in number than the residents of Cormorant. So it was really interesting. It was, it was definitely a switch. So I went there for a year, uh, fell in love with everything outdoors, the community, living on the lake, all of the opportunities that I never had growing up in the city, or I should say different opportunities than what I had growing up in the city. And uh, I ended up staying for 10 years. And all of that led to my love of science of being out on the land. I was fortunate enough um, in my small community that uh, I team taught with the other high school teacher. So we covered everything and we did these outdoor excursions and we went on the land regularly and we just worked together in a kind of a cross-curricular way um, to be out on the land. Um, that is where my love of Envirothon started and where I started my own team. Um, and I just went from there. We went from, you know, I went from being a coach to Envir for Envirothon uh, for many years. Um, then I came into my current role, which is a science instructional coach, and uh, sat on our provincial uh, committee and, and steering committee and started to work at the event from that level. And for the past couple of years have now been working at the international level with NCF. 
So in the time that I was in the classroom, I also decided it would be a great idea to get my master's. And uh, I ended up doing my master's in distance education before it looked like this. So this was a well thought out decision about 10 years ago. And I ended up um, gaining my master's in distance ed in 2012. And at that time, the reason why I wanted to focus on distance ed in education was uh, partially because of the geography and, and everything that we were doing in the North was all about thinking out of the box and looking at things a little bit differently and how can we achieve amazing results in a little bit of a different way. And that's what the program was all about with uh, referring to distance education as well. So in my role now, as I mentioned, I moved from classroom teacher to science instructional coach for my division, um, which means that now I am responsible for 42 schools across Manitoba uh, and all of the science education and larger, bigger picture programming that happens, including Envirothon. Uh, so every red dot there is one of my communities. Um, and as you can imagine, pre-COVID and certainly highlighted throughout COVID, uh, distance education, teaching virtually, outreach in different ways, dealing with um, communities and internet, no internet, internet depending on how many clouds there are that day, you know, all of this stuff is a reality for what I do uh, and have been um, working with, you know, over the past decade or so. Uh, and through this time, um, I've learned some fundamental truths. And you might have more to add on to this. These are some of the key ones that tend to stick out to me. Um, all through this, we're looking at those learning relationships and that's really key to motivation and excitement, uh, but as well, the content relationships. Um, we also know that Zoom fatigue, it's real. There's now uh, very well done uh, biopsychosocial studies and the effects that Zoom fatigue has on both educators, us, as well as learners, as well as families and everybody involved there. Um, we also know that students and families need support. Uh, they need us. As much as we need support, they also need support. A few more fundamental truths. Celebration. It's important. Self-care. Uh, Tiger King. <laughs> so bad it was good and now there's season two out. So if you're a Tiger King fan, or if you just need to lose your brain for a few minutes and focus on something that really makes no sense at all, you know, I'm right there with you. Um, but finally, avoiding a snapback. So making sure that we take all of the good, all of the progress we've made in learning over the past two years, and not simply just going back to the way things were done before, but actually looking at how have we grown and changed and how can we incorporate the best of both or the best of everything that we've uh, come to know. So like I said, it's hard to believe that 2019 was our last Envirothon as we know it. We went into 2020, uh, it kind of ended up like this, um, but we're still going. And you may have uh, been on, uh, on the call at first when I asked Stephanie, how are things going where you are? And, you know, we have new variants and we have still rolling closures throughout Manitoba uh, certainly, I'm sure where you guys are as well, it's a similar situation, but uh, we're, we're not near the end of this as we were hoping. You know, we're all hoping to be at the end of this by now. Um, so that leads us to think, how can we continue to do this well? I always come back to this model here, and this model really speaks to me because it is about relationship. You're looking at the relationship between student and teacher. We're also looking at the relationship, though, between student and content and how we can establish those content relationships. However, we don't want to lose ourselves in this. We also need us as teachers need to connect to that content as well so that we are learning, so that we're excited and motivated. What's missing on this diagram, though, is that student to student relationship, those peer relationships, as well as our uh, student or teacher to self that self-reflection and how we're doing and why we're doing what we're doing. And that's important as well. Whenever I think about distance education, uh, I have a key phrase in mind. And this is that key phrase. So this is the time, and I'm serious, I'm not joking here, where I want everybody to unmute their mics all across North America here. This is a true uh, distance activity. 
and unmute your mics now and we are going to shout the phrase of the day. Are we ready? One, two, three. Um, I would give that like a seven out of ten. I think we can do better. <laughs> Let's shout it nice and loud, everybody. Ready? Excellent. Thank you. Sorry, it's the thing, the <laughs> Zoom meeting. Are you apologizing to your colleagues? Shout it even louder so they can hear you again. <laughs> So when I think of Maslow before Bloom, just a little reminder, we've got, of course, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, where we're looking at that baseline, baseline of physiological needs, safety, and then going all the way um, up the pyramid to esteem and, and love and belonging and that self-actualization. And we can't really get to the top unless we're making sure that the bottom is taken care of first. And that's where we are throughout this whole pandemic, is making sure that everybody's safe everybody's feeling secure, everybody has um, uh, kind of that same goal of making sure we're set there so that we can continue on. What we're also looking at though is figuring out where Bloom's comes into play. So we've got Bloom's, um, you know, series of, um, sorry, taxonomy of approaches and educational approaches and goals, where we want to start with remembering and understanding and that is a foundation, but we're aiming to get to that evaluation, that creative phase, and that holds true in Envirothon as well. Um, but we have to remember, especially at a time when we are still uncertain, when we don't know where we're going yet with in-person, virtual, it's different from community to community, never mind from state to state or country to country, everything's changing still. Um, we need to remember it's Maslow first, bloom second. And if we take that approach, um, we know we're doing it with the right frame of mind and, and that right um, student-centered, whole student approach as well. So when I talk about connection and maintaining that relationship, um, really what I'm talking about is just being you. Your students need you. If you're coaching a team, they need you to just be you. We are trying to make sure that we have some personal connections in your planning. Um, we want to celebrate and help you celebrate your events along the way. And we want you to have an early win with your students. That's where a lot of people are stuck is how do we even take that very first step? What action can we do to have an early win with your student? And I've got a couple of ideas for an early win. An early win might be your very first meeting is... Uh, a pizza party. That might be an early win. Or it might be a celebration right off the start where you go into every class or, you know, online with every class, however it happens to be, and just spend 10 minutes promoting Envirothon or talking about it or talking about travel or wherever your, your students are motivated. So what I would like to do is a waterfall activity. Now, maybe you've done this before, um, but if not, this is how it goes. Everybody is going to um, type their response into the chat feature, but don't press enter until I say so. Okay. Oh, sorry, here we go. A couple more early wins, win ideas. And then we'll, uh, we'll come to our waterfall here as well. So what I want to know is your early win ideas, what has worked for you in other areas, and don't just think about Envirothon, think about other team opportunities that students have, such as sports or other clubs, um, travel, anything like that. How do you get people involved and invested? What is that early win? Do you start with your best dad joke and that's it? Do you start with, you know, a social media campaign? Do you start with you know, just that warm, welcoming environment where you encourage children to, or our youth to, uh, to come and find out more. So again, this is going to be a waterfall idea. I want to know an early win idea from each one of you. Type it into chat now, but don't press enter just yet. And it's tough to do because that's almost like a, like a trigger finger <laughs> reaction there where we want to press enter. So I'll give you a moment. What is your early win idea just to capture and motivate the, you know, encourage that interest of our students? Okay. 
All right, I think we're ready. Uh, on my count, you are going to press enter. Ready? Three, two, one, go. And now we'll see that waterfall. All right, so a lot of great ideas came in. Um, and I'm not going to read them all, but I would like, while I'm speaking, I would like you to read them all and take note of the ones that really stand out to you. So I see a lot of ideas uh, that have to do with food. Yes, <laughs> provide some snacks. You know, even if they're virtual, if you drop off something or, or if you have uh, some kind of treat package going home with the kids or packages that you drop off. Um, we've got a field trip. Yes, travel is a great motivator in Envirothon and getting off the school grounds and going to local areas with the potential to go even further. Um, play games. Yes. Oh, those hands-on activities. Absolutely. Getting outside. Yes. Look at this, those personal connections. That's exactly it, that relationship building, challenging their competitive spirit. Nobody is more into things than a high school student who has a comp like a challenge in front of them, right? That is definitely something that you can uh, capitalize on. So folks, have a look at this waterfall effect here. All of these ideas that came out, this is awesome. You guys are the experts. Look at all of these ideas. So for the early win, Stephanie, I'm wondering if we can take this uh, and when we send it out to people, just, you know, have the early win ideas in a document from everybody. I was just thinking the same thing. So yes, yeah, you definitely can. Great. A no homework pass, extra credit. Yes. Um, something that I didn't actually put into my presentation, but I'd be willing to uh, speak about if you wanted to just send me an email afterwards, is uh, that I actually, in Manitoba, wrote the courses for the Manitoba Environment and got them credit approved. So they're half a credit available in grade 9, grade 10, grade 11, and grade 12. So half a credit each level. Um, and if you want, you know, some information on how I managed to do that, and I can send you what I did. Um, certainly, and you can build on that if you're interested in getting it uh, credit approved as well. All right, so moving on from that. Um, another important feature uh, about relationship is that connection to content. So we had a lot of early win ideas there that did focus on experiential activities, those getting outside, hands-on activities, and also using that community classroom as a source of inspiration. So your community classroom involves you in your four walls that you're in. It involves your school building, but it doesn't just involve you and your five students. It involves maybe certain classrooms of students and what they're studying. It could involve your immediate community, businesses that are around you, local knowledge keepers or elders or community members who, who know the land and the area, local hunters, trappers, fisher people, or um, uh, you know, naturalists, people who know and love the land around you. This is absolutely your community classroom. Your community classroom also um, involves people like natural resources in your local communities or anybody that you can outreach to uh, look at for examples, inspiration, equipment usage, and so on. All right, so we have our second waterfall activity here. Now this is going to be more for our uh, advisors who have had a team in the past. Although if you're brand new and you think you've got something here too, please contribute as well. But what I want to know is what are the students' favorite aspects about Envirothon? So we've talked about a few already, the food. <laughs> yes, always it's the food. The personal connections, you know, getting outside, being challenged and so on. If you had to pick one and only one area, and it might not even be something we've mentioned yet, what is a student's favorite part about Envirothon? I'll give you a moment to get it into chat, but don't press enter yet. I'd also like to uh, find out where this waterfall exists and go there. That should be our next Envirothon field trip.
All right. So what is your fate or student favorite parts of Envirothon, the favorite aspects? All right. So, oh, I see some people are pressed enter already. So go for it. Yes, go for it. If you haven't done it, press enter. And again, we can summarize this info and get this all sent out to you as well. So I'm going back a little bit. Uh, again, I'm not going to read them all, but I encourage you to and jot down some things that might work for you and that will inspire you. Um, I have a comment, please share creating an Envirothon. I'll speak with um, Stephanie, maybe we can talk after about how I can share that information in the most effective way. Uh, or we can do a mini session and I can just kind of showcase on how it worked in in mind, but I would not be an expert on how that would work in yours, but it could provide you enough, enough groundwork for it anyway. Sure, I think uh, that will depend um, for each state and province as well, with yeah. their particular um, educational standards as well as their Envirothon program. So it'll be yeah. kind of specific to the area. Yeah, so I'm happy to help if you'd like to chat about it. All right, real life skills, the field experience, spending time, uh, the prizes, the cash, the items. Yes, absolutely. Uh, training by experts. Sometimes students just, for whatever reason, I could be telling my students one thing and then an expert comes in or an alternative expert who's not their teacher comes in and tells them the exact same thing, but they learn it better and they know it better from, from an outside person, which does happen. Um, we've got shared interest in nature, those interactions, the outdoor settings and working together, it's not a lone competition. Yes, absolutely. Um, what I'm seeing here, oh, I love this, that your team teaches elementary students about natural resources and then they become the leaders themselves. What I'm seeing here, pretty much every single one is all about a uh, relationship in some way. It's a relationship to the content or it's a relationship to their peers or a relationship to you um, or that amazing relationship of getting out of school for two days, <laughs> which is important too. All right, that's awesome. I love these. We'll definitely compile these and, and get them sent out your way. So when we think about what are, like, why are our students actually there? That's how we can capitalize on how to motivate them further. So you know your students best. Every team is different. Every student is different from year to year or month to month as well. And in COVID times, our needs are going to be different here as well. So if we take travel off the table, if we're just having a virtual event, we need to appeal to other reasons why students are part of this. There's still mentorships. There's still virtual field trips. There's still getting out of school to focus on these events. You know, there's still outdoor opportunities where possibly we could gather outdoors rather than indoors and so on. Um, so there's many different reasons why students like Envirothon and uh, um, going virtual or some kind of hybrid event or an unknown event at this point doesn't always have to necessarily be that barrier uh, because we can still achieve those reasons why students are interested in the first place. So we did talk a little bit, some of you already touched on this too with your reasons, uh, all about celebration. So celebration is a huge part of relationship. And uh, I, I definitely promote celebrating from day one. Um, and, you know, I have some ideas up here where we're celebrating the learning process. So not just the endpoint competition, but we're celebrating the entire process of Envirothon, where maybe we are offering or gaining sponsorship for some learning lunches. We have certificates of progress, social media updates, and so on. We're celebrating team building approaches. So we're, you know, those unique learning summaries or student-led scheduling where students become the leaders of how they're going to approach Envirothon, how they would like to study, what's reasonable in a certain chunk of time and so on, where you have students responsible for that. Um, and we can celebrate participation in regional events with write-ups, social media, letters of recommendation that students can now put into their portfolios uh, if they're collecting for a resume building and so on. So there's the celebration of missing school for a couple of days. There's the celebration of just being together virtually or in person um, and uh, 
how we motivate those students from that distance ed approach absolutely involves this as well. So in your experience, here's another waterfall question. Um, in your experience, what is the best way to celebrate with your students? Okay, so don't press enter just yet. I just wanna know your answer to this. What is the best way to celebrate? For some, it's the cash or prizes, <laughs> but that's an end point, right? And we wanna celebrate the whole learning process with Envirothon. Sometimes the celebration is leaving the community. Sometimes the celebration is just being together. All right, and you can press enter in three, two, one, go. All right, pizza and ice cream, yes. Celebrating, figuring things out together. Recognition, yes, absolutely. Recognition within your school, it's a no cost item. Right, having students lead something, be recognized, be highlighted in some way, it's amazing. Showing that progress. Oh yes, uh, there's another one, recognition throughout the school, exactly. Lots of pictures, newsletters, student-specific accolades, yes. Muffins, <laughs> always a win. I'd come there, I'd be part of your team if there's muffins, absolutely. Uh, this is fantastic and you guys know it best and this is the reminder that this is what gets your kids going this is also what gets us going if we get to be recognized if we get to be celebrated um that's huge so in terms of celebration i wanted to share something with you um i like to tell the story of one of my environment students his name was jeremiah so this was when i was in the classroom and remember i was in um kind of north central Manitoba, so pretty high up there. You know, I think it's about the 56th parallel or something like that. And uh, Jeremiah came from a family of hunters and trappers. So his family um, knew the land well. They were well versed in being outdoors and living off the land and making a, a career living off the land as well. Um, however, Jeremiah was one of those students where when you're in a small school and you know the kids from you know grade two to grade six to grade eight and you, you you're not sure how they're going to be as they they come up the grades and you know that in grade two they caused a little bit of chaos and in grade six and grade eight and now they're coming your way and uh, Jeremiah was absolutely that kid so when we started talking about Envirothon um, Jeremiah didn't want to do anything extra but a couple of his friends did and we're in a small community, remember, there's less than 400 people in the whole community. And we're seven hours away from any city and an hour away from any other community um, by dirt road. And we just didn't get out that much. So Jeremiah uh, started to become involved in Envirothon. And of course he wanted to be the wildlife expert. That was a completely natural fit for him. Um, we were going to our first uh, Envirothon event uh, in Southern Manitoba. So we had quite the journey ahead of us. We were now driving five students and myself in a truck, a six seater truck, and we were coming towards the city uh, when Jeremiah just about jumped out, of the, jumped out of his seat. And he starts saying, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I've always wanted to see this. I can't believe I'm seeing this. I only thought this was in the movies. And he was just so excited. Now keep in mind, this is Jeremiah. He's now like 16 years old. He's a tough kid who didn't want to do this in the first place. Um, and he's just beside himself. But in Southern Manitoba, it's all prairies. And I'm looking and I only see flat lands. We're not even in the city yet. Like there's nothing there. I don't know what he's talking about. Um, but after a bit of prodding, it turns out that he was talking about the clover leaf, like on the highway, the loop-de-loop. Uh, that goes so you can turn turn direction. We call it a clover leaf here. I'm not sure if there's another name. Um, and uh, that was it. Like we could have turned around and went seven hours back home and he would have been just completely happy. Um, as it turns out that year, he was a first timer with Envirothon. He actually won uh, the top placement for all of the wildlife representatives on the teams uh, and received provincial recognition for that. 
and was absolutely sold on Envirothon and, and did it for the next couple of years. And it's amazing how that celebration, that motivation comes in interesting ways and in different ways for different people. So um, moving on, I had a look when you folks registered, you uh, submitted some amazing questions and concerns. When I looked at these, I saw three main categories of where they kind of fit into. Um, first is the category of keeping the event fun and engaging. Um, so my best advice for keeping it fun and engaging is maintaining that relationship. So the relationship to yourself, the relationship to the content, and that relationship to peers, and also that internal uh, relationship as well of retrospection and, and introspection. Um, hybrid team approaches, we're going over a few, and I'll, I'll get to a couple more as well, of how we can engage students, some who we might be teaching at a distance, some who we might be face-to-face -face with, or any combination of that. So uh, Stephanie reviewed one already with the iNaturalist activity and making sure you can do that from anywhere, but there's still a strong connector to it. So keeping the kids connected with each other. Um, and also approaches to virtual training. So we are set and ready to give you a few more amazing key ideas. Just keep in mind as we give you the ideas, what's the phrase of the day? Who wants to unmute and say it for me? I Maslow see somebody. Bloom. Yes, yes, there we go. So Maslow before Bloom. Um, so Stephanie, I'm going to hand it over to you for a few minutes and, uh, and we'll just keep going with this. Great, thank you, Jacqueline. So another thing that some of you wrote in when you registered for this event was that you weren't sure of what materials or information you needed to cover with your students. What do they need to study? Um, what do you need to work on and train them with? So for this, I encourage you to check with your state and provincial programs to find out what specific requirements there are for your local competitions. Some states and provinces have their own educational materials and curricula, as well as learning objectives and goals for your specific program. And this will be what the students will be expected to know at those qualifying levels of the competition. So start with your state or provincial website um, and your state or provincial contacts. NCF Envirothon does provide some guidance in the form of the NCF Envirothon learning objectives. Uh, if we can go on to the next slide. These were developed specifically for the international level of the competition. So some states and provinces have their own learning objectives that they use for their local competitions, while others use the NCF and Biathlon learning objectives directly. Um, so you will need to check with your local program, your state or provincial program, to see what the case is for you there. Because the NCF and Biathlon learning objectives were developed for the international competition, with respect to the vast diversity of ecosystems and environmental issues across several countries, uh, that not every learning objective will be relevant to every state or province um, or for local qualifying levels of competition. So these learning objectives encompass a high level of knowledge and skills for these students, which may surpass what's expected at your state or provincial competitions. So we encourage you to explore the NCF Environmental Learning Objectives if you're looking for additional learning ideas, or you want to take your training to the next level, but always consult with your state or provincial program about what knowledge is expected of the students at your local competitions. They will need to master that content first before branching out to other topics. The NCF Environmental Learning Objectives can be found under the current competition banner of the NCF Environmental website and under areas of study, and I will put a link for that in the chat. Some of you also inquired about current issue materials for this year. Again, your state or province may have specific materials for the current issue that are relevant to your state or province. Check with them first. More information on the NCF and Biathlon international level current issue for 2022, which is waste to resources, can be found under the current competition banner on the NCF and Biathlon website. And one additional topic under the realm of study materials, some registrants also inquired about practice tests. Again, I'm going to be a little bit of a broken record here. Uh, consult with your state or provincial program to see what materials they provide. Um, you know, what you're going to be studying in forestry in North Carolina is going to be very different than studying a grassland out in Kansas. Um, there's a vast variety of ecosystems and different things that the students are expected to know, and that will vary from state to state and province to province. Uh, the NCF Environment does have some sample tests 
for each area of the competition, each of the main subject areas. And these can be found under the resources banner in the test writing section. And just, again, these sample tests are for the international level of the competition. So these questions may be quite a bit more challenging than what's expected at your local competitions. But you can adapt and modify these tests to help train your teams if they have mastered the content for your local state and provincial competitions or tailor them more towards the content that your team needs to be studying for your local event. So I will put those links up in the chat. And someone asked where you can get answers for the sample test. They are included. Um, so if you follow the link for the practice tests, the answers are under each question. So if you want to distribute it to the students, you'll need to take those out. Um, but they, those, are, those are included there. All right, so those links are now in the chat. And if we could go on to the next slide. Oh, Jacqueline, you're muted. It wouldn't be a Zoom um, meeting without someone saying that once. Be. It wouldn't be. We have to have that in there somewhere. I did it for your benefit so we wouldn't feel left out of that. So you're welcome. <laughs> All right, so we do have um, a couple more ideas to share with you really quickly to use at your uh, leisure and to benefit you and your program in working with your students. Um, five minute field trips, STEM cards and goose chase. So I'm gonna share the first two. And I think I just need to share my screen differently in order to get this. So here we go. Um, this is a document that I created a number of years about, ago. It's just about bringing the outdoors in and the indoors out with five minute field trips. And uh, what I did was ended up revising this at the start of COVID um, so that it's applicable not just in a classroom setting or a schoolyard setting, but for students who are working from home, students who are working separately at a distance or within your own classroom as well. So it's a little bit better suited. This follows our Manitoba um, curriculum for science. So you can use it, you can share this with kindergarten through grade 12 um, folks, feel free to share it as you will. It's in a Word document, so you can add your own ideas to it as well. Um, so even though it might not be lined up exactly to what your outcomes are, uh, you can certainly use it as a guide for inspiration. However, like I said, it does go all the way from kindergarten uh, to uh, high school. And if we look at, for example, grade 11 and 12, we've got chem, bio, and physics in there. Um, if we're looking at something like grade 10, um, each, each section of study has two, three, four ideas of how just to get outside and look at those relationships in a new way that's not sitting in a classroom or working out of a textbook, but actually getting outside, getting into your schoolyard, having students get into their own home yards and neighborhoods as well. Um, so hopefully this can uh, inspire you and help you work with your students in a way that's meaningful for them so that they understand Envirothon concepts in a bit of a different way. Um, and now I believe I need to share in a different way. The second uh, item that I wanted to share with you is uh, this document here. We found in our school division that uh, at the start of COVID, what teachers were really looking for were meaningful activities that were easy to implement, that you could really photocopy and send home in an activity package that people could do in the classroom or from home. And this is actually what we came up with. So we started to work with both our own Indigenous Way of Life Department, as well as Parks Canada. And we developed um, this series of STEM cards. So each card is a connection to our curricular content in Manitoba. Um, it has a challenge. It has uh, easy to find materials, not even materials that you need to run to a dollar store, but stuff that's common around the home. Um, we have the scientific how it works, as well as the Indigitech, so an Indigenous way of life perspective, as well as a biological perspective as well. And that's where Envirothon comes in for sure. Um, again, this document has uh, items from kindergarten through grade 12, but I would like to send it to you just so that uh, everybody has this. And if we go all the way to, I don't know why I'm not letting me have my sidebar. Oh, here we go. 
it was just covered up. Um, if you look at this, there's a lot of land-based uh, STEM ideas in here. And if we go up to the high school level, you know, we really have those opportunities for your students to be learning in a way that's on the land, that's meaningful, um, and that uses materials that they can easily find in the home and have, you know, um, an idea that's transferable from home, classroom, or where, whatever your teaching situation is. So we also have um, these in print copies, um, and they're, well, something we're quite proud of because it, it is a project that was uh, all about the needs that were presented in COVID and hybrid teaching and virtual outreach and all of that. Um, we will be sending you the digital copy. Um, Stephanie will make sure we have the five minute field trips and the STEM card set for you to use as you will to adapt according to Envirofon and your team needs to use as something to intrigue your students to celebrate uh, and as part of their learning. So I am going to go back to the PowerPoint and uh, Stephanie is going to share the next one, Goose Chase. All right, thank you, Jacqueline. So another uh, resource that I wanted to share with you all is Goose Chase, which is a scavenger hunt app. It's really fun um, to be used for the interactive training of your teams. So as the owner of a game, you can create, create a game, you create different missions uh, to explore different areas of Envirofon subject material to get your students outside and engaged. So as you can see here over to the right, that's part of an Envirothon test game that I created. You can see, you know, have the students need to take a picture and find evidence of competition between plant species and take a photo, or they need to texture soil and then upload a picture of their soil ribbon as they're texturing that, um, or find a macro invertebrate in a river or stream. So some missions involve taking that photo. Others can involve a, test, a text answer, like we see the mimicry question here. Um, the scarlet kingsick and evolved to mimic the coloration of the coral snake. What type of mimicry is this? And others can be video answers like with the soil VMP. So challenging your students to find a best management practice that prevents or mitigates soil erosion and make a video explaining why it works. So there are all different ways that you can engage the students with taking pictures, taking videos, putting in text answers. Um, some of the text answers can also be automatically scored as well and offer your students a chance to try again if they get the answer wrong. You can create a game for free for up to three users. So this can be three individuals or three teams. You can pair students up or have all of your students on the same team to work together to answer the questions and complete the missions as a group. So you can see some examples of what Envirothon team questions might look like here. And then you can also see kind of in the middle um, when you submit a, uh, an entry, like what that there's the picture, picture of the evergreen tree, and then it pops up on this little news feed. And then so it shows um, all, the, all the participants in a game who's, who's submitted uh, evidence for what, and they can see you know, the pictures that other students are taking or watch their video about their soil BMPs. Um, so very interactive and very, very neat. I actually used this in a professional development workshop um, and it was fun for adults too. So high school students for sure will definitely be interested in that. All right, can we go on to the next slide? So there are also several additional resources that you can explore when you're looking for training materials or activities for your teams. Um, so first have a few different ones. Uh, the first is the USDA NRCS, the Natural Resources Conservation Service. They have information on many different natural resources topics, um, soils, land use, water, plants, animals, energy, climate change, and more. Um, they have resources for teachers, students, farmers, ranchers, and forest managers. They provide technical assistance to landowners as well, and NRCS is a sponsor of the NCF Envirothon. So can go and check out their resources. And I've got links for, for Goose Chase and for NRCS and the others um, that I will put up in the chat once we finish this section. So uh, next slide, please. There's also the United States Forest Service, which has, surprise, uh, information about forestry and trees. So related to that particular Envirothon area, uh, they've got a lot of material out there that you can explore. And next slide. 
There are also several local resources that you have at your disposal. Um, in the United States, there are 3,000 conservation districts across the country that may be able to provide educational opportunities, training, access to resource professionals, um, and other things. Not all of the conservation districts have the resources available to directly train environmental teams, but many do, and they're happy to help and to get the students involved. So you can reach out to your local conservation district. I've got a link um, that will help you find your local conservation district if you're in the U.S to reach out to them and see you know, what, what opportunities there might be there. There's also the National Association of Conservation Districts, NACD. They have educational resources through their Conservation Education Hub. Um, and then there are resources for younger age groups there as well. So depending on what, what range of ages of students that you teach, there, there are some resources there. Each state also has its own forest service agency. Um, that may have educational materials or be able to provide trainings for teams with resource professionals. So you can reach out to your individual state forest agency. And next slide. And for our Canadian teams, um, just dumped a whole bunch of US specific resources. Uh, did, not, did not forget about our lovely Canadian teams and educators. So there are lots of resources available through the government of Canada. Um, and a few I've listed here, Natural Resources Canada, um, kind of the Department of Environmental and Natural Resources and Agriculture and the Environment, all sorts of information on all those topics that you can see on the slide there. And I also welcome any uh, suggestions that you all have if you want to throw something in the chat for something that, yeah, don't forget your park professionals, um, Lisa said in the chat for other resources that have been helpful for you or your teams. Um, so I'm going to put the links for those resources I just mentioned up in the chat right now. Yes, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, definitely. Um, someone asked, yes, can we please go back to the last slide? And I'm also, I'm sure there are many other resources available in Canada in addition to these. Um, I didn't know, Jacqueline, if you had any that you wanted to add. All right, local experts, farmers, hunters, fisher people, and more. Excellent. Yes, and definitely the EPA and the US. Here are the links to the Canadian resources that are up on the slide right there. Um, so great, we, will, we can also collate these um, and send them out in the email along with all of the other resources that we've talked about today. So uh, if you can think of anything and want to share it, put it in the chat um, and thank you everyone who has shared. All right, so a little bit of a review. What, what have we talked about today? Um, and uh, boil it all down. So we talked a bit about the National Conservation Foundation, which is the NCF in the NCF Envirothon. We talked about the different levels of Envirothon, how you might have local area or regional competitions um, that build up to your state or provincial competition that eventually reach the international level of the NCF Envirothon. So make sure to check with your local state and provincial programs for study materials and for the requirements for your local competitions. We also did a fun activity with the NCF Marathon iNaturalist project and talked about how they can be used to engage your teams. And we discussed some other resources for training materials and activities. And all, a bunch of those links are in the chat and will be provided. Um, and Jacqueline, is there anything you wanted to do a um, review of for your section? Major points? Um, I think they already know it. It's all about content and making sure that we consider the phrase of the day. Maslow before blue. <laughs> there we go. Excellent. So we also have some requests of you. Uh, the first is Envirothon alumni stories, which I'll go into in a little bit. Um, we would also love for you to follow NCF Envirothon on social media. Our social media handles will be on the slide at the end of the presentation. So reach out, um, join and follow us there. 
And keep an eye out for our Envirothon advisors email listserv that is coming soon. Um, and I will send out information to those who are registered once that is up and running. So if we could go to the next slide, please. So for Envirothon alumni, we want to hear their stories. Uh, what are they doing now? How has Envirothon impacted their lives and careers? So for those of you who have coached teams in the past um, or have students on your teams this year who are graduating, we would love to hear Envirothon alumni stories. Um, and it's been really amazing to look back and see, you know, how, how Envirothon has impacted the lives, both of students who ended up, who end up going into natural resources or environmental careers and those who choose a different career path, but it still enables them to be more environmentally aware um, and impacts their decisions um, to live a more sustainable life. So we do have an alumni spotlight on our website. So it features students from all different levels of competition. So it can be from your little local area or regional competition, your state or provincial competition, um, or the international competition. We would love stories from any and all Envirothon students. We also have an Envirothon alumni network on LinkedIn, which is a group for alumni to share stories, chat about careers, post jobs, and stay updated with Envirothon news. And we need you to help get the word out about these things. So talk to your students, reach out to your students who have graduated, um, see what they're doing now. And I'll put links in the chat for both of these for the Envirothon alumni stories on the Envi Envirothon website, as well as the Envirothon alumni network on LinkedIn. All right, and next slide, please. All right, so as we've uh, been discussing, we've done a lot of communication with you on the relationship to content and how we can stay motivated, where to find content and so on. Uh, we've talked a lot about maintaining that relationship to you and to peers, um, but we also talked about an important aspect of relationship and that is celebration. And uh, so in order to celebrate today, we're gonna play a little game. And it's all of you against me. So all I need is one person to get the response correct. Um, and then I will reward you each time and you are going to love these rewards. All right, so feel free to unmute your mic. You can participate on chat or you can uh, use voice. That's completely up to you. Um, this is a competition. So you can win the ultimate 2021 Enviro champion status which gives you bragging rights for an entire year, not just the remainder of this 2021 year, but for a year from now. If you're ever in a situation where tiebreakers are needed, you get final say. If anyone questions you on that, tell them I said so, and that you get tiebreaker status because you won the Envirothon champion. 100% um, of the donations given by other teachers during this competition will be distributed to all of you. So if you have donations, get those in. And you get my permission for the unlimited use of memes in all of your future teaching, especially in Virathon teaching. All right, here we go. Here's our game. It's a simple game. It's simply called, what do you see? Now, again, you can tell me what you see or you can put it into chat. Um, the first category, does anybody here see live vegetation? Yeah. Now, not if you get up and move around, but right from where you're sitting right now. Oh, yeah. look at those responses. Yes. <laughs> yes. Grass. I'm so it jealous. Is. Completely jealous. Grass. Oh, man. Yes. I'll, I'll be seeing grass again in about five months. Trees, rosemary. Oh, awesome. Okay. So you got that one uh, because, like I said, all of you are working as a team to me. So here we go. Your reward. Yeah, I, I thought you'd like that. They just get better from here. <laughs> All right, next one. What do you see? Two states of water, anybody? Tell me what they are. 
Okay, good, good. Fish tank, faucet. Well, that's still one state of water. They're both liquid, liquid and solid. Oh. Tell me what you're seeing though. Tea and ice, great. Yeah, liquid and cloud, excellent. Yeah, you guys have this easily. Okay, here we go. So two states of water, you've got it. And here is your reward. It's true. It, it's so true. It's a little bit sad. <laughs> but yes, maybe we can laugh about it a bit now. All right. And I have one more question. So this is the third one. It's going to be a little bit more difficult for some of you. Um, so remember, we have to get three out of three to achieve that championship status. All right, here we go. Any type of new technology that you received in the last six months, new to you or new, uh, new purchase or whatever it happens to be, but you have to see it. It has to be right in front of you. Oh, iNaturalist. Yes. Love it. Look at that. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> I hear that. Tis the year of technology for sure. Well, that's awesome. Okay. So because of that, I will give you your third reward. And I find this hilarious every time I look at it. <laughs> Does anybody know who that is? Someone's going to recognize. I'll wait. I'll give it a moment. Macaulay the kid from Culkin. Home Alone. It is. It's Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> he, he does this hilarious series of um, like meme setups. And, and this was one of the series that he did uh, about, you know, COVID and working from home and, and all of those good things. So um, with that, I hope that you had a really good time today and that you really got some insight into how to maintain that connection with your students to keep them engaged um, and the importance of relationship as well as having those resources for content. Um, I would like to uh, give you my information. If you would like to chat about, you know, anything to do with science, everything in Virathon. Um, and also I'll be making sure that Stephanie has the five minute field trips and the STEM cards to send out your way. You'll all be getting a digital copy of those. Um, but feel free to reach out and, uh, you know, we can consider this the beginning of a conversation, uh, not an end to the conversation. And uh, Stephanie, uh, yourself as well, and your contact info here. Yes, please feel free to reach out to me with any questions as well. Um, I'm Stephanie Toller. You can see my information there, um, phone number and email. Those are the social media uh, places to follow us for NCF and Virathon on um, down at the bottom there. So please reach out, connect with us, and we would love to hear from you. I will also post all the grand giant list of links um, in the chat now with everything that I posted from the beginning of the session. Um, so you'll have that, and then I'll also send that out in our follow-up email and we will have a video recording available of, for those who were not able to make it or maybe had to leave early um, or miss some part of it or just wanna watch it again. Uh, so thank you all very much for being here. We really appreciate it and hope that you have found some new tools, some new approaches, new ways of thinking about things. Uh, to engage your students and to get them excited about Envirothon. So thank you very, very much. Thanks, everyone. Take care.